Hello and welcome to the after show of Undercover Billionaire. I'm Ben Kaysen here with Matt Smith. Ready to go. What is the real story behind episode five? Let's find out. Five, five, five. Here we go. Yes. <laughs> five, five, five. Here I like we go. it. Here we go. More, more behind the scenes. More behind the scenes. That's right. We had a big episode this time. So Grant has COVID. He comes back and he comes back with a bunch of pitches for Matt to kind of get the businesses set up. So we've gone through a bit of a lull. So Matt and Grant kind of established themselves as partners back in episode one and two. Then Grant leaves for the first COVID lockdown. Then he comes back, but then is again hit with a COVID lockdown. This time it's because Grant had COVID. So the partnership is there, but it hasn't really taken off. We start to finally see that in this episode. But first, I kind of want to ask you, like, how much was communicated to you when Grant was in his lockdown and his COVID? Because you see a lot of these shots of Grant, like, working on stuff, looking things up, sitting on his couch. Like, how much work did he do with you while he was out and at home? Zero. Zero. No, not any work, you know? And I think he, he says that in that episode. He says, like, man, I could have probably communicated and done some Zoom meetings and stuff. But, yeah, yeah, we didn't talk once during that whole time. I, I think he did do some work because he had a great some great pitches when he came to me. But, yeah, he, he we didn't communicate at all in that two weeks. Not at all. Was that concerning yeah. to you at all? No, no. <laughs> not, I mean, I knew every, again, everybody gets hit so differently with this. Sure. Some people are down and out, and some people it's like a small cold, and they don't even know any different. So, you sure. know, I, 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 I mean, I, I think I checked in with the crew once or twice to make sure everybody was okay. I didn't know how many people were affected or not. Like, it was very covert. Sure. Um, but, yeah, you know, I, we didn't communicate much, but I, we, gotcha. we knew it was only a matter of time before I'd see him back with all these cameras. <laughs> sure. If you want to check out our last episode, we kind of talked about this as an issue. Like, with all of COVID happening, Matt, you could tell he has, like, I don't know what the word, unwavering faith that it would turn out because, like, we were talking about, like, it's it's a lot of question marks there. And so were you concerned at any point during this about Grant, like, not delivering on your investment right when he got back from COVID? I was not. You know, I think that... Uh, Knowing Lewis Curtis and when I've met Lewis, I just I, there was definitely a trust there. Uh, the guy's intentions were were pure, and mm. and he didn't even cash that check, you know. Which that was a to me yeah. was a pretty big uh, credibility, you know. Mm. He earned my trust for sure by not cashing the check and, and and coming back and saying, "Hey, I wanted to make this right by you." Sure. Anybody in a different position could have been like, "I'm cashing your check and I'm going. I'm out of here." You know what I mean? So it was very, it was, it was yeah. He, he earned my trust for sure. And coming back into it, no, I mean, I was excited to get him back and excited to to see that energy back inside of the, the business world. Good, yeah. So it happens then. You have Grant come in and he's going to pitch you three business ideas. At least that's what it showed in the show. Yeah. Can you tell me what that meeting was like? Yeah, so it was funny because now I get to see with you guys like the behind the scenes. So I didn't see how much pressure was into that meeting. Mm. I saw a phone call. It's like, hey, Matt, can I come meet with you a little bit today? Like that was my side of the meeting, you know? Yeah. It wasn't like, hey, I have this pitch and hey, be prepared. We're going to we're gonna do something big here. It was none of that was a part of this. So in my eyes, yeah, I, I saw how like nervous he was. Like he just, he had a lot riding on that pitch yeah. from his side of it. And from my side of it, it was like, hey, he's coming back. Let's go meet, you know, yeah. like, hey, let's go see what's going on. So when I got in the room, I do, I, I distinctly remember him getting out the whiteboard. I'm like, okay, there's, there's a little bit more to this meeting than like, let's catch up. <laughs> like, like where, hey. where are we headed? What's going next? Uh, and he did, he pitched three different businesses. So he was like, Hey, just sit down let me get my whiteboard out. And now that I know who Grant Cardone is like, he's famous for his whiteboards and he's just always like, <laughs> he's drawn and he's gotten you following like, what's going on? What's next? You know, knowing him now, but then I was like, okay, this guy wants a whiteboard. Let me see if I got one somewhere. It, it, it snap. <laughs> let's go, let's go play this. So yeah. Uh, he essentially said, Hey, I've got three proposals, Matt. I'm, I'm moving to Pueblo. I'm bringing my family here. Yeah, we're, we're going to do something special together. There was no doubt. And I, and I felt the same way. Like there was something special here. Let's figure out what we're going to do. Yeah. Um, so he, he talked about the Asahi bowl. Yep. And at the time I had no idea what an Asahi bowl was, okay. I, you know, and I think some people come cracked me on that one. There's the, the hundred percent chiropractor. People be like, how'd you not know what that was? I'm like, I had no idea what an Asahi I bowl was. I think some people guess, still don't. Like, yeah. I had no idea. So it's like a healthy fruit, veggie, we're well, not veggies, but fruit bowl with huh. like greens and, <laughs> Anyway, we don't have one of those in Pueblo. There's no Asahi bowls in Pueblo. So, uh, in, in in Grant Cardone and Lewis Curtis is he's a healthy guy. You know, he he looks for places to get fast food and health as quick as he can. Sure. So, that was one of his things. And you know, in it, well, I'll go through all three. But there was that one. There was apartment complexes, mm-hmm. um, which de- always intrigued me. I, I've been investing in in residential and commercial my whole life. You know, mm-hmm. or not my whole life, but for a long time now. Yeah. And I kind of know both of those areas pretty well. 
But apartments was something that I didn't really understand. And the mm. syndication thing, I didn't really understand how that all played out. So I was, my ears definitely perked when it came to that. And yeah. then the marketing side of it, 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 it actually had to, I had to go backwards on everything that I thought in my own head. Because when I opened a marketing company in Tarrant COVID, as everybody knows at this point, yeah. uh, it was to, it was, it was 100% for me. It was in-house only. I, and I, I, I had people ask us, hey, will you guys come shoot some videos for us? Will you guys do this? And I, I, I stuck to my guns. I said, no, this is this to build is us us. internally. This is not for sale. This is 100% internal. And so when me and him talked, you know, I, I think that it, it was fun. It, you know, the, the stuff that you don't see on this show too, and I, I mean, I'll, I won't go too much into it, but then the next day while I was considering all this and as we were talking about this, I, I broke out the whiteboard and I pitched him on three ideas. Oh, yeah? <laughs> yeah. So this wasn't going to play, nor will it play, but it was a funny part of it because, again, I, I'm just a guy that's meeting another guy that's moving from California. So he gives me his three pitches. So in my head, I'm like, okay, I like all your ideas, but I got some pitches too. Yeah. So if we're going to do something together, so the next day I pitch him on mattresses and I pitch him on a few things that I know so well. Yeah. Um, but now knowing going forward, like, you know, I, that wasn't my job to pitch. I didn't know that. Like in my head, <laughs> You're just I'm like, all right, we might do, if we're going to think about doing something together, I'm going to tell you what I know and what I'm good at, you know, and, and those three things I didn't know at the time. So yeah. that's a whole other conversation, but I think it's just funny to me that I doubt that footage will ever play, but who knows, maybe it'll play that I, I gave him a pitch too. What did he think about your pitch? Uh, I, I think he knew how passionate I was about mattresses. You sure. know, I think that was that was my thing. It was like, how do I scale what we're doing? And, uh, you know, he but he also knew that we were doing a pretty good job in the market yeah. that we were in. So it was hard for, for him to get involved in that. Sure. Um, so anyway, go back a day. Uh, Asahi Bowl, restaurant business has always been a hard one for me. Like I, mm. I, I when he pitched that originally, I just I know that it's a tough industry. There's a lot of moving parts to it, um, and, the, yeah. and and it's hard. And buying into a franchise, and he'd already talked to franchisees. Like he'd already talked to the people up north that were willing to put a franchise down here. So oh, he, so he had already hooked that up. He's already done the due diligence. He like <laughs> he came down and said, okay, here's some guys. Here's how successful they are. Here's their numbers. Here's what they're doing on a yearly basis. Wow. Um, each location. Here's yeah. what the profit margins are. Here's what it takes to do that. So he'd already really, really done his homework. Um, so yeah, I think that quarantine was good for him. He was probably making those connections during that time, I got to assume. Yeah. Uh, the apartment thing, uh, as you see, uh, I, I think... In the in this episode that we 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 we, he we talk to about directed to Kona Kai, to Kona Kai. Yeah. Mm-hmm. and I'm from Pueblo, so anybody that's from Pueblo, I think knows what the Kona Kai is, or at least the majority of people. It's just sure. a really cool apartment complex in town. It's, it's really got like neat. a, yeah. I mean, where else in Colorado can you get a palm tree? I don't think there's anywhere yeah. else in Colorado that has a palm tree, but they have the vegetation so perfectly, the climate controlled inside of this thing where it's apartments all around it, and it's it's cool. So there's palm trees and stuff inside of it. So just a very unique apartment complex. So when he said that, I was like. I'm interested. I want to know how that world works and how the yeah. syndication world works and how, how all of that works. So I was, my ears perked for sure on that. And then obviously the marketing, like in mm. my head, I knew there was cameras all around us. I knew there was something special going on with this American pride thing. Yeah. So I thought, what, what better way to highlight our amazing community, mm. you know? And that's where my head ended up going. Like, you know, yeah. as I had to, time to think about it then and after it was like, hundred percent marketing's the that's that's the avenue for this that's the yeah. avenue for us to help the small businesses in our community at that point he'd already met a lot of community members and he'd already discovered that hey there's 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 not a lot of pushing there's not a lot of momentum and, yeah. and there's some sleep in it sleepily sleeplessness sleep sleepy, sleepy <laughs> whatever there is yeah, yeah. it was sleeping and and that there was some there was some momentum that could be created so yeah. I was already excited at that point so um, I think that's where Wake Up Marketing came to fruition. I agree. It's interesting to hear from my end, right? Because I just joined in to Wake Up. Wow, it's been six months now. But I've been yeah. here. But that was after it was already started and set up and made a You're roll. like a senior here now. I know, it's wild. But, <laughs> but like, like watching that, it was like he called it the Pueblo Push for Profits. Yeah. And that was like, is that what that started as? <laughs> it's just funny. It's just funny. Oh, you should have heard the around. names that he had. Like he came up with ones? some guerrilla marketing, Pueblo push, Pueblo. Like he, I don't, I don't even remember all of them. But there, were, he had a ton of names, and I was like, wow. well, I, I, I want to control this part of it because like snooze mattress, sure. like a pure spot, all the different businesses that I've created. Names is a big deal to me. Like, and it's a big deal in the industry. Like you want to absolutely. And, and the beautiful part about this is, is wake up was something that Mia had come up with. Yeah. For the mattress brand. So it was. Oh, the, she came up with it just for the mattress side. Yeah. So this oh. was this was created way before, but Wake Up was created for snooze. Wake up! Like it was mm-hmm. like a wake up in the morning wake type thing. Up. So go to bed and then wake up. So we were already going to roll with that, 
And then it just made so much sense because that's that's what we were trying to do. Let's mm-hmm. wake up the business world. Let's wake up this community. Let's wake up. Let's wake up America. You yeah. Know? Let's start with Pueblo, and that's that. That's where it all started. So yeah, it was funny, but there was a lot of names that were thrown on. And, and, <laughs> and Paige, oh, that poor girl drew. I don't know how many logos. Did she have to logo out each oh, one? Oh, she drew hundreds of logos. <laughs> oh. Stressed herself <laughs> out over all of them, and then I'm we sure. ended up picking probably the most simple one, the wake up one we have yeah, now. Right yep, there. this is it. Like this is the simple wake up <laughs> logo that we ended up picking. Um, yeah. And I think granted, the beginning. I, I, I think he liked the name, but he wasn't in love with it. He's like, ah, we'll talk about the name later. But I, yeah. it's grown on us so much that I'm hmm. I'm a believer. It's oh, yeah. I love it. Yeah. Yeah. That's so exactly what we do. What was that like for you introducing, you know, Grant and the Pueblo Push for Profits, whatever you were going to call it, to Mia and Paige and Meredith, who were your internal marketing team at that time? What was it like getting them to buy into this vision? <sighs> I, I got to assume that's going to play on one of these episodes. I'll, like, yeah, I I've got to assume that that's coming in next, but I... Uh, it was a, it was, it was a, it was a, it was definitely a challenge for them because sure. you know, and, and it took months of us hiring the dream team. I mean, we really got the best of the best in this community to Absolutely. start this, what we had yeah. internally. So, and then it took me giving them the vision of Snooze and of Snap and of Snooze in a Box and the Snooze becoming a franchise and all of this stuff. It took me. Yeah getting that into that and now everything that i've talked to you guys about in the last month or two like all right let's pull that out and we're gonna do it we're gonna change this a little bit yeah so it was it 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 took a lot of selling and i think uh, i'd love to get mia's side of that too and 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 meredith's and pages but it was true it was definitely the uh the 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 head turn like huh wait (laughs) up this this is what you said we're not gonna do you said we weren't gonna do this i'm like i know trust me this is gonna be awesome (laughs) so at that time like if you say hadn't had that group of marketers already working with you, say he had pitched this whenever he was first in town and you haven't even brought anybody in at that point, are you going to be as open to that idea or is it because you know you have a great team and that can fit it that really makes it work for you? That's a great question, Ben. I I, I have to think I would probably have been opened as much because it was, I understand that the way that the world's going and, and that's the way the world's going. Like yeah, I don't, sure. you know, I just published a book. Yeah. I don't care if you're the, and I'm not the best, I don't care if you're the best writer in the world, if you have the best product in the world, if you have the best service, it is, it comes down to marketing. Yeah. Who's the best marketer? Who Who's the best at getting that out there and, and pushing that over and over and over to get the product sold? Uh, so I always knew that this was something that had to, and it's the way of the future. Mm. These darn cell phones have changed the way we do world, sure. the, the way we do business, the way the world works. Like everything has changed because of the cell phone and because of how convenient life is. So yeah. I think I probably would have been sold on the marketing side of it one way or another. It's good. It would have probably been completely different starting sure. from scratch. Yeah. No idea. So we were. I think we were just blessed that we already had some leg up on this whole thing. You're ready to roll. Yeah. So from his standpoint, I think watching that episode, he was kind of like, oh, they already started this. You know what I mean? So he was probably a little bit more intimidated, but the reality was like it worked perfect. Hmm. It worked absolutely perfect. That's awesome. So you mentioned in the episode, you're like, hey, Grant was way better in this meeting than the last one. You can really tell something special with him here. After this meeting where he pitches things, what was your take on Lewis Curtis after that meeting? Had that changed anything in your mind? Yeah, I just, I think I say it in the episode. I'm like, he's back! You know, <laughs> he was back. Like, his energy was back. He was excited. He yeah. was he was ready to, to just, to do, because, you know, the first couple episodes is, and that was weeks. Like the first while that we were together, the energy of this guy, the enthusiasm, he was, sure. he was firing on all cylinders. And then there was a couple of days that I'm like, I'm not, you know, he just doesn't feel it. like he's, maybe he's not coming to Pueblo. Maybe this isn't the full time. I, I didn't know what was going on internally, mm. but that was one of the episodes that there was that turning point. And I think I do mention in that episode, I'm like, yeah, I guess who's <laughs> back. And he's like, well, I didn't go anywhere. And I'm like, yeah, you kind of, you're, you're back. You know, that energy's back and, and, and success breeds success. Energy breeds energy. You know, we do our meetings every day. It's just that sure. that is exciting. And when he's excited, I'm excited. The whole team's excited. So, mm. it, you know, it was definitely helpful. Absolutely. And, you know, Grant Cardone has made a lot of his money in making real estate deals. Yeah. So what was it like being with Grant Cardone pitching an apartment complex to you at that point? Could you see that there was that deeper level of understanding even back then before you saw it? Yes, hmm. 100%. Like, something clicked in my brain when I was hanging out with Lewis Curtis and I was like, this, this guy knows, like I, I honestly, when we went to that meeting, I almost thought like I got some, I've got real estate experience. I've bought in a ton of rentals. I've flipped sure. houses. I buy commercial. I felt like I might know a little bit more than this guy. <laughs> I'm going to go into this meeting. I'm going to teach him something about buying real estate. He's just going to set this meeting up. Yeah. 
And I walked in there and it was absolutely opposite. Mm. Like he understood the right questions to ask. Now I know who he is. <laughs> I yeah. understand he's Grant Cardone. At the time, Lewis Curtis, like it was, uh, it, it was fun to watch him in his element mm. because it was definitely his element. Like sure. we, we toured this whole place. I've got a hundred, uh, not a hundred, but I've got a ton of behind the scenes pictures that you could probably see on our, our, our wake ups page. I'll make sure we get them on our page. But yeah. I was taking pictures in there. Because it was the first time I've ever shopped for an apartment complex. So yeah. I'm like, this is something I want to get into and I want to understand and learn a little bit more of. So I remember taking like selfies and while he's just, he's pitching with the, the real estate agent. The real estate agent drives down from Fort Collins or Denver or somewhere. Oh, you know, he's, mm-hmm. he, he's the broker for this. So he comes down just to meet us, mm-hmm. but he didn't want cameras in there. Everybody would have seen this whole thing, but he was like, absolutely yeah. no cameras. So they did a little bit of drone footage in the parking lot, but they wouldn't come in with us. So it was just sure. me, Grant, and this agent. And we went into all the apartment rooms. We opened them all up. We, we really, we, we get onto the, the heaters, these really, really old heaters downstairs. We went down to the furnace rooms. Yeah. We, we checked out this entire building all over the place, inside, outside. And, and it was just, it was a cool experience. Grant, mm. Grant understood real estate. Mm. And that day I was like, awesome. okay, this guy's, there's, there's something going on here. And I think I asked mm. him in this, uh, somewhere in this episode, or if, I think it's on here where I'm like, you know a little bit more about this, a little bit more than <laughs> you know something about real estate. Yeah, and he's like, "Yeah, I've bought something once or twice in my life." I'm like, "You, you seem like you know some." <laughs> I thought I was going to be the guy that knew something. I was going to teach him, but no, yeah. he he was ahead of his game. So it was it was an experience. And now that I know what that what that really was, and, and the Grant's got two point two billion dollars in real estate. Yeah, this is it's crazy. I, I, I'm honored to be on that ride. Like I was there with him while he was negotiating a deal, and I watched this stuff. So it was cool yeah. to look back at that now and see like the mm-hmm. Grant Cardone. I, I was there watching him negotiate a deal, and uh, so it was fun. That's awesome. It was definitely a, a cool thing. You'll have to see how this all ends up. I'm excited. Those will be in the next it's, episodes. It's going to yeah. end up awesome. Yeah. What, one, it, it's just fun. So yeah. So I've got one more question for you. This is yep. like way behind the scenes. This is just a question about Matt Smith, the guy. Dun, dun, dun. Uh-oh. <laughs> you get these three pitches, and I know the way you are. You're very excited. I'm sure you go home. You go home to Jenny, your wife. How is that like you're telling her, hey, you mentioned this eyeball. I like this eyeball. Hey, we're going to go look at this apartment. Hey, we're going to start marketing to people. What was what were those conversations oh, like? Oh, that's a great question. <laughs> I'd love to get my wife's input on this. We'll have to get her on one of these. But she... I think my wife knows that I'm, I'm I'm a little I got some screws loose in my brain and that I do things very often and 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 she is the most supportive human on the planet mm-hmm. and I couldn't do what I do without her like she's just an amazing wife but like she wasn't surprised in any which way mm-hmm. I mean we we've owned ten different businesses in different industries and sure. and a lot of times they've been like that like hey. There's a path here, and I'm gonna I'm gonna go this way, and she's like, okay, I got it. <laughs> yeah, Here's, we're gonna let's let's go eat dinner now. Like it's just <laughs> some kind of nonchalant. So when I came home, I do I, I remember talking to her about, and for some reason she she thought the acai bowl was a good idea because she knew what it was. <laughs> yeah, and she's like, that'd be great in Pueblo, and I'm like, no, I don't want to do restaurants. Like, no, this is a bad idea. Don't let me go back. And she's like, tell them we'll get into the acai bowl. So she actually was interested <laughs> so in the acai bowl. She liked the one you turned down. Yeah, <laughs> she liked the one that I turned down. She thought it was a cool idea. And I remember telling uh, Lewis that the next couple of days, and he was like, yeah, that's cool. Well, maybe we'll talk about that someday. And I was like, yeah. Anyway, let's 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 stick let's stick to this one, this this one thing or these two things at the time. So uh, yeah, I, I can't say it was a huge surprise to my wife, but um, yeah. Hmm. That's awesome. It was yeah. I'm I'm a little I'm a little crazy like that. I like it. I think that's something that I've really enjoyed, like being a part of Wake Up and being you know close proximity to you. You're very fast. You're like, hey, we're doing this thing. A lot of energy. Let's go. And I love it. Let's I love hold it. Hold on, we're gonna figure it out. <laughs> we fall on our face. We get kicked in the teeth, but we get back up and we figure it out every time, right? That's, just, that's part of the game. That's part of the game of life that I enjoy so much. And yeah, I, I found my partner in crime. Mm, you know, that's absolutely. a great question, and, and you could probably. A lot of husbands or wives coming home to this question would be very like, what? Huh? Sure. But yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm blessed in that area for sure. Hey, that's awesome, Matt. Any other takeaways from the episode for you? Yeah, it was just cool. Like, I, I just can't say enough on, uh, on knowing now what I know. What, a, what an honor it was to be mm. with Grant Cardone negotiating and, and to see him in action and, and, and on the phone after the mat, and that, I was with him through this whole process. So sure. watching him negotiate, watching him get the LOI out there, watching all of the stuff and how this all processes, how cool! Yeah. Like how many people get to be in that room with this guy? And it yeah. was cool. It was it was a cool day, and I've got a lot of cool memories from this for sure. But uh, Asahi bowls, I know what they are. I have some of them in my freezer <laughs> now. 
You're there's on the, the boat now. In my, I've not opened them yet, but there is. I saw my wife bought them, so we're going to try the Asahi Bowl for the first time. I've not time. opened them yet. You haven't had one. No, I've not had one, but I have them in my freezer. They're there, so maybe we'll have an Asahi Bowl competition or something. Well, you know, nice. I like it. I like it. Uh, but yeah, and then the marketing side of it. I think that's something mm. to really... These future episodes of this is going to be sure. fun because there's a lot of behind the scenes and a lot of really exciting stuff that comes comes in the next couple episodes I'm Absolutely. excited about. It's really fun to watch Wake Up in its infancy kind of getting going because yeah. obviously, you know, I, I just didn't know it was called like Pueblo Push for Profits and all these names. It's just cool to see I gotta find it from an sheet. idea. I'll, I'll get pages sheet. Like there's a ton with of all the names. There's so many I names see that. so much stuff that we came <laughs> up with. And wake up it is. Wake, wake up, up it is. I think we picked a good one. This is it. It's what we're doing. <laughs> awesome. If you want more behind the scenes of what really happened on the previous episodes, check us out right here on Wake Up Pueblo. Go to our YouTube. Check it out on our Facebook. We talked about COVID a lot whenever it came to Grant and dealing with that and what happened with Matt on his side of it go check that out as well as find out what it was like for grant to leave for a little bit like where was matt's head at when grant leaves with a ten thousand dollar check what do you think he's thinking at that moment go check that out go find that out as well as find out what those first couple episodes were like where they were building that relationship and keep your eye out for the next episodes coming up because the story gets more wild and we've got the behind the scenes of it and we're going to have a lot more people in these yes, chairs. We yep. We're going to bring everybody that's on all of these episodes to tell you their side of it. Stuff that we're still watching on the sidelines. I didn't even know half the stuff going on, so it's going to sure. be fun. Absolutely. It's going to be fun. Yeah, absolutely. Go check out Wake Up Pueblo. Go check out Snap Fitness. Go check out Snooze Mattress. And also, keep your eye out for Undercover Billionaire coming out every Wednesday on Discovery Plus and then eventually going to be on the Discovery Channel on Normal TV. Thank you so much for joining us. For Ben Case and Matt Smith, this has been our Wake Up After Show. Check us out next week. Thanks for joining us. Wake up! Thanks Wake for joining up. us. And special thanks to Tyler Shown right here Woo. behind the camera. This is the guy you don't see all the time, but he's having an extra good hair day today. Thanks, Tyler. Yes, he is. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Great job, guys. Good job, Matt. <laughs>